Well, okay. Uh, banks in the UK, Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, Lloyd's, Barclays, etc. They're sitting on undisclosed hundreds of billions of dollars worth of losses, which have yet to be fully revealed. The global banking system shuttles these huge losses through offshore accounts. They play counting tricks every quarter. Uh, last year, I wrote a column for Huffington Post calling, uh, it's called Peekaboo Accounting and Lehman Brothers. And then uh, six months later, a year later, one of these bankers admitted to the fact that when it's time to report for the quarter and give uh, the, um, the um, not the income statement, but the balance sheet report for the quarter, they simply shuttle debts off to another bank's balance sheet for a few days. They report uh, a statement that doesn't show these debts. And then when the reporting period is over, they reassume those debts or they assume the debts of another bank. And it's there's collusion. There's wholesale collusion going on as part of RICO. It's a, it should be prosecuted under RICO because all of these banks are colluding in a way that forms a racket. They form a racket, which means that they misstate earnings on a quarterly basis. All the UK banks are guilty of this, as far as I can tell. I have not seen a single bank that's not guilty of racketeering in this way. Uh, they put debts off the balance sheet as part of collusion. And remember, in a free market capital society, you're supposed to have competition, not collusion. So they violated that principle, all under the watchful eye of Gordon Brown as he was a uh, chancellor of the exchequer. You know, he'd go down to the dispatch box every year with his big red box of, uh, you know, old Playboy magazines or whatever he's reading. He's certainly not reading financial statements because he does have uh, more than a uh, second grade education. He would see the glaring omissions being made by these banks, so he must be just reading, you know, uh, these other magazines, and he would pound the table saying the British economy is growing the most it's grown in 300 years and all other such nonsense. And yeah, sure, unless you count the debts, then you would say that it's been shrinking the most as it has in 300 years. Obviously, because the Bank of England has lowered rates the most in 300 years. That's to, take, that's to try to mop up the mess made by the worst fraud and, and financial scandal in 300 years. And Gordon Brown is pointing to somebody else as the guilty party. He is the guilty party, uh, and and uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much longer the British people are going to uh, tolerate this um, this posturing by the prime minister to try to abs to try to abdicate to try not to try to insulate himself from some kind of accountability. I don't know how long that's going to last. Uh, well. It depends on who who who's remaining. You know, Jim Rogers says flee. I think it's it's probably good advice. We we of course have been giving that advice too, though um, not too hard because we want we do want our listeners to remain in London for our show. Well, yeah, and of course, uh, up forty percent last year was gold bullion. So if you t bought the gold, as we said last year and the year before and the two years before that on this show in Residence One Hundred Four Point Four. You would have maintained your purchasing power. If you had 10,000 pounds worth of purchasing power two years ago, you would have 10,000 pounds or more in purchasing power today. Mm -hmm. If you bought 10,000 pounds worth of gold last year, you would have 10,000 pounds worth of purchasing power today. In other words, even though the pound is down 40%, you could still buy 40% more stuff in pounds thanks to the fact that gold maintains its purchasing power. It has done so for 5,000 years. And for the people in the UK who didn't buy gold, they're feeling quite stupid. For people in the Iceland who didn't buy gold, of course, it's a, in a lot of cases, it's a difference between life and death. The people in the Iceland who bought gold, some of them lived, some of them died. I would imagine it's going to be the same in the UK. A lot of people are going to find themselves running out of life because of the problems that they uh, in, encountered, economic problems that could have been avoided entirely by buying gold. Now, uh, gold has yet to make new all-time uh, all highs against the dollar and the yen, yet uh, this is the only two holdout currencies. It looks like it's making a move on the dollar in the past week, so we may see some new highs against the dollar in the short term. But again, you know, the same guys who, over the, under Gordon Brown's tenure as uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, who were responsible for artificially low interest rates, who, who were responsible for wholesale market thievery, market manipulation, duplicity, accounting fraud, uh, FSA fraud, SRO fraud, this uh, Office of Serious Fraud Office. What is it called? The Seri Serious Fraud Office. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be hiring, uh, tripling and quadrupling their staff 
and um, doing a forensic accounting of what's been going on with the Bank of England and the Treasury and the Exchequer. So these people um, are, are the people now who, in, in coordination with the, uh, the banks, you know, the Morgans and, and the Goldman Sachs who are plugged into the Fed, and now we've got Tim Geithner at the Fed, another, uh, you know, insider, technocrat, they make it very, very difficult for gold to, to trade freely. Uh, we see a naked short selling in the, in the gold futures markets, which makes it very difficult for the gold price to reflect demand. You know, demand for gold is, asked, is off the charts, and yet the price uh, is not reflecting uh, demand because it's not a free market. Just like the bond market is not a free market, the currency market is not a free market, you don't really find any, any markets trading freely when you've got the, you know, what, the banking uh, cartel and mon monopolists uh, basically picking prices and sticking to the price. Now, what's going to happen is that as the crisis continues, the amount of money in the slush fund to keep the price of gold down is going to even is going to run out, and then gold will go on a tear because you've taken away the 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 the, the boot will, t will be removed from the throat of gold, and because they're just going to run out of money to uh, to, to manipulate with their their, their money is not inexhaustible. So and it, it certainly with the U.S. dollar because it's the world reserve currency and like in Russia, stupidly, as the ruble collapses, they're buying dollars instead of buying gold. Those people should be rounded up and beaten with a clue stick because obviously, <laughs> the, by buying dollars, they're uh, you know jumping out of the frying pan and jumping into the fire. They should be buying gold. Putin and his cronies should be buying gold. I mean, I, the reports are that they have been buying some gold and adding to their gold reserves. But, you know, that's moronic because why is the Russian economy and the ruble sinking? Because oil and gas are crashing. Why? Because the dollar is being manipulated. If you want to reverse the crash in oil and gas, you need to reverse the uh, dollar influence as it's being wielded by reserve, reserve currency um, Gestapo. And the way to do that, to kill the dollar, is to buy gold. Use what, dollar, what reserves you have left to buy gold. This way, the dollar crashes and oil and gas would be free to rise. Therefore, your economy would recover. But nobody in Russia, I mean, they were, I don't know what the hell. I get, you know what it is? They don't really work for the Russian people. That's the problem. The people in the top Russian banking system, they all work for Goldman and, and, and uh, J.P. Morgan. It's just an extension of the same group. They're not really, you know, they don't represent Russian people. And the Russian people are too stupid to know what's going on. So you have this huge dichotomy between stupidity and duplicity. You would think that... Putin, who is a black belt in judo, would have a better understanding of using his opponent's strength against him. Yeah, so, he would, but he, he doesn't work for the Russian people. He's clearly in the pocket of Wall Street. If, if he wasn't in the pocket of Wall Street, he would be buying gold. Uh, I think it's partly also to do with his, uh, it's another, it's maybe his bigger enemy he sees as the oligarchs. So, yeah. so he's, he's, by destroying temporarily maybe he thinks his economy he's destroying the um the oligarchs that's true maybe maybe he sees the oligarchs as a bigger threat at this moment than uh positioning uh, against the u.s well it is busting the oligarchs this is. is busting the oligarchs and uh, as a result he's he is increasing his power so maybe that's the short-term goal to bust the oligarchs they've lost 300 billion dollars since the crisis began a lot of them are now going to the state for help so I would imagine that maybe that's the strategy. He's busted the oligarchs. He ends up assuming a lot of assets. There is uh, some who think that Putin is, in fact, the richest man in the world, richest man in the world, richer than uh, Gates or uh, Warren Buffett, which would mean he's got more than 60 or $70 billion. And um, it's quite possible, uh, given the huge rally in, in, in resources we've seen, and uh, he could be consolidating his, uh, his, his grip and, and that huge wealth. That could be the story.